When I moved here to Key Largo, uh, one of the things that I love about where I live is that just 150, 200 yards north of me on the same side of the street is a park. It's called Rowell Park, and it's where a lot of people gather for sunset at night. And there is a great place there where people let their dogs off leash and they're turning it into a dog park. And it looks, it looks like they're really making it cool. Now it was a bit more rustic when I moved in, in the middle or just right off Raoul in the, as part of Raoul park is a lagoon and it's probably 200 yards long. It's long and it is either man-made dugout or nature dug it out, but it's, whereas everything around there is maybe eight, 10 feet deep, it's 12, 15 and deeper. And it's kind of interesting because sometimes there's a little channel, <clears throat> excuse me, that goes into it. And sometimes you'll be, I used to sit there and meditate in the mornings and I would hear this plop, plop, and it would be tarpon or uh, dolphin. Some of you remember a and when I used to do that, there would be dolphin there. Well, every year we get what's called a king tide here. And the king tide means super, super high tide. And it has to do with the alignment of the moons, etc. The moon. And I'm going to press pause there, but tell you the story of what I discovered because the moon and the tide plays into them. I went over and was walking around with Teddy and next to the lagoon that I'm talking about is a little pond. It looks again, like it's naturally occurring. It's surround everything there. You're walking on a coral reef, but this is maybe 18 inches, two feet deep. It's probably 15 feet across and it's round. And the very first time I walked over there, I saw these jellyfish, and there were lots of them. There were small ones, there were large ones, and they were just flitting around like this. And someone was there, and I said, What kind of jellyfish are they? And they said, It's a Cassiopeia jellyfish. Well, Cassiopeia jellyfish do sting, but they are photosynthetic. In other words, they don't generate their own charge, they get it from the sun. And they their sting is not nearly as bad as some others. And the most interesting thing about Cassiopeia jellyfish is that as I stood there and watched them, I noticed that the older they were, the more likely they were to swim upside down. The babies, the little ones, the little guys that were about the size of a shot glass, they swam like you'd see a jellyfish swim, you know, with their tendrils down. The, I don't know if tendrils is the right word, but it sounds good. The older ones would swim like this. And if you can see in the picture, I've had my producer, Dragon, uh, show you what I'm talking about. The older ones swim and ultimately, and this is what's interesting, because I kept wondering, I went there one day and the jellyfish were all gone. I hadn't been there in months. And I went to the park and I looked there and the jellyfish were all gone. But what was there, and if you look in the picture, you can see here in the thumbnail, what was left was a whole bunch of these little plants that had sprouted up. I didn't know what they were. All right. Well, here's what happened. The king tide lifted the lagoon and somehow some jellyfish got into this pond, Cassiopeia jellyfish. When the king tide uh, withdrew, it left them there and they multiplied big time. There were thousands of them. It was such a cool thing to see. And I would always point it out to people who were just walking through the park. You've got to see the jellyfish. 
Well, what happens is as these jellyfish get older, they not only turn upside down, but they ultimately bury themselves in the reef. These animals are actually, well, the reef is living. Let's remember that. So these animals ultimately replenish the reef by becoming part of the reef. As they get buried in the sand, they get hard and they literally become part of the reef. It's nature's way of rebuilding itself, almost like skin cells. By the way, this is in no way enough to repair the damage of uh, the climate crisis we are going through. As a diver over 20 years, the reefs have changed color. They have gone brown, my friends, and they used to be beautiful and colorful. So anyway, do everything we can to protect the reefs, including reef safe sunscreen. These Cassiopeia jellyfish are actually there to ultimately replenish the reef, to become part of the reef, to, to, to like I say, become skin cells for, for the reef. And what occurred to me is it's their legacy. It is their destiny. Um, it is something that they are meant to do. And I, I want to revisit this idea that we are all meant to do something. When I look back on my life professionally, it all makes sense. I got a broadcast journalism degree. I was on the radio for years. Here I am sitting in front of cameras every single morning babbling on and you all are watching and listening and it is so cool. My legacy is to spread positive information that improves people's lives around the world. That's what I want. When people say, who was Will Bowen? He helped improve people's lives through predominantly getting them to recognize how often they complain and ultimately as a result to complain less. So I think we all leave a legacy. We can leave a legacy of, nah, not much, not much. I have a friend who's a drug counselor and he talks about how 98% or more of people who go through drug counseling, it fails for them. It's, it's not successful. Only about one or two percent. But he says, you know what? My legacy, my life, what I live for is that one or two percent. Linda, who I know is watching right now with her Just Say Whoa program, that's a legacy. You know, people are going to remember that. That is a positive impact on other people's lives. And we can have a positive impact on other people's lives by doing something nice rather than tearing something down simply by building something, something that other people will benefit from. The landscaping here is good. I wouldn't say it's great. I would give it a B. And <laughs> so there's this big pot here, flower pot, big, big, big flower pot. It's like an oversized Disney-esque kind of thing. And I don't know what they intended to put in it, but nothing was put in it. And so about a year and a half, two years ago, I decided, I kept thinking, when is somebody going to plant something? And finally I planted something. And then I began to maintain it and it's still growing. It's still there. It's not the most beautiful thing in the world, but there's a plant there instead of a big empty pot and it continues to grow. Now, someone else who lives here noticed that some of the landscaping was dying. I wouldn't call it dead. There was still some greenery in there. And he went around and ripped the landscaping out of the ground. He was being destructive. I was being proactive. I was leaving a legacy. I don't know what he was doing. Tearing things down is not enough for a legacy. That's what people will remember about us. Building. That's what people want to appreciate in other people. One of the best things you can do is to simply build up the other people around you. My, my ex-wife, Marty, used to say, and I thought it was silly, to be honest with you, when I first heard it. Now I think it's the greatest way to live your life I can think of. She used to say, I want people to smile when they think of me. Wow, that is a very plain, easy way to bury your head in the reef, to create a legacy, 
to become that flower that attaches to the reef that creates something good going forward. We're going to create a legacy. So what is it that we want our legacy to be? I'm excited because I can see what it is I'm going to do. I'm finishing up the complaint free certified trainers program. The first time we did it a few years ago, it was so successful that I know that the people who are going to uh, be approved to to take this course uh, are going to be very successful themselves. And they're going to spread the complaint free message out there because it spreads best by individuals. I'm going to rewrite the third edition of my book, and then we're going to launch the television show. And all of this is going to support carrying this message out to the world. That's my legacy. Mine seems kind of big. (laughs) It doesn't have to be big. It can be just volunteering at the um, local SPCA. I know a woman who is a dog walker. She goes to the SPCA and her way of volunteering is she goes in and gets the dogs, puts them on a leash and walks them around, spends a little bit of time loving on them. And she gets to go home and she doesn't have the hassle of it. It's a small legacy, but it's a good legacy. We've asked before, what's it going to be in your epitaph? I, I spent the last, all this week, I spent all this week doing a will, a living will. What do you call it? Power of attorney, sort of a trust. Anyway, I set up all of these things. That's what I did all this this week. And in the doing of it, I felt very mortal. I felt very mortal. And at the same time, it also made me evaluate who I am, where I am, and where I'm going. And we can create a legacy. We can bury our heads in the reef. We don't want to bury our heads in the sand. We want to bury our heads in the reef. We want to get out there and we want to do something for other people or other animals or something. Plant something. Get out there and plant something. I can't believe it, but I'm going to talk about her twice. She's such a wonderful person, Marty. Um, She moved into an apartment And she told me that when they came and dumped the trash, they were not super careful about it. And what happened was there was a fence just outside of her apartment. She had a little green space. She's on the bottom floor and there's a green space and there's a fence. And when they dump the trash, the trash gets blown into the fence and her fence was covered with trash. And she said she too spent a week or two just sitting there hating the trash. And finally she realized it's my view. I get to improve it. And she said she put on some rubber gloves, a trash bag, put on some headphones, and she had it all cleaned up within less than an hour. And now she goes out there every so often and it stays nice. She gets to enjoy it. So one of the great things about creating a legacy is that you get to enjoy it along the way. If you're doing something because you want to do it and not because you feel you have to, I love what I do. I love being here with you all. I love being on stage in my own way. I love writing books, (laughs) even though I sit there going, "Ah," because it's like pulling your own teeth and cementing them back in as you write, but it's great. And you get to create a legacy. So If you haven't yet, identify your legacy. You probably already have one. It doesn't have to be grand. It doesn't have to be world changing. It just has to be life improving. It has to improve your environment and your world and get started on it. Something easy. Like I said, um, me wanting to be more involved in the landscaping here, you know, just planting things. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying